Welcome to another video lesson for Integrated Math 2. Today we're going to talk about evaluating piecewise functions. Let's get started. To begin with, let's go ahead and define a piecewise function. So a piecewise function is a function or a graph that is made up of multiple pieces of other functions or graphs. Each piece for a piecewise function is defined over a specific interval, which means it's going to have very specific domain values attached to it, and you'll only see that portion of the function showing up for those domain values. Let's look at an example. In our example here, you have a base cell phone plan that costs $75 a month, and it gives you unlimited talk and text and 20 gigabytes. For each gigabyte over 20, the plan charges you $5. So you can see that there are two different parts for this plan. A $75 if we have 20 or less gigabytes, which is why our domain for that portion is x is less than or equal to 20. And that's going to be represented by this horizontal portion here for our graph. And then at 20, something happens. We start getting charged a different amount. So we have a different function. Our function is now our base plan, $75 plus $5 for every gigabyte we go over $20. And we can see that only exists when we have x is less than or equal to 20. So looking at our graph here, we see that from 0 to 20, and then at 20, we start to increase because of that change in our plan. Knowing that we have two different parts for our plan, we want to make sure we're careful when we're evaluating our function. So we have two questions. How much would you owe if you use 32 gigabytes? And how much would you owe if you use 40 gigabytes? For those two questions, we want to make sure we're using the correct part of our piecewise function. So 32 being a domain value, I would first check my index to see which portion of my piecewise function I would use. So for my first question, 32 gigabytes, I'm going to compare that to my index. Is 32 less than or equal to 20? No, it's not. So I would not use that first part of my piecewise function. But 32 is greater than 20. So I could plug it into this portion of my function. Or if I had a better graph, I could go over to 30 and come up and estimate what my value would be. So we're going to go ahead and plug 32 into that function, which gives us 75 plus 5 times 32 minus 20. And if you evaluate that correctly, we get 135. So we'd pay $135 if we use 32 gigabytes. For our second question, again, we're going to look at our value, f of 40. If we could see f of 40 on our graph, we could go over to 40 and then come up and use that to estimate what our value would be. Or we can use our index. Again, checking our domain values, 40 is not going to be less than or equal to 20, but 40 is greater than 20, so I can plug it into my second portion of my function. So to evaluate it, you would have 75 plus 5 times 40 minus 20, and we would get $175 for our plan. For our next example, we can see that we have three different functions. Our first function is f of x is equal to 6 for every x value that is less than or equal to 3. So there's nothing to plug in here. If we have an x value less than or equal to, to 3, then our value is going to be just 6. So it would be a horizontal line. Between negative 3 and 2, we have the function 2x plus 7. Again, we'd be plugging in x values between negative 3 and 2 into this expression. And then lastly, if x is greater than 2, we have the square root of x for our function. So again, we have three pieces. And depending on your x value, we're going to identify which portion of the function to plug it into. For our first example, we have f of 5. I'm going to go ahead and check my index to verify that I'm using the right portion of my function. So 5 is not less than or equal to negative 3. It's not between 3 and 2, but it is greater than 2. So I'm going to go ahead and use this third piece to evaluate that. And I would go ahead and plug it in, and I would get as my answer the square root of 5. For our second example, we have f of negative 3. I'm going to go ahead and evaluate that. Now, we want to pay close attention to our index here. This middle portion says x is specifically greater than negative 3. So negative 3 is not greater than itself, which tells me I should be using the first portion because negative 3 is less than or equal to itself, which means that my answer is going to just be 6 because there's no x value to plug in. Again, our, functions, our function is equal to just 6 for every x value that is less than or equal to negative 3. If you look at our next example, 0, uh, 0 is not greater than 2, but it is between negative 3 and 2. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it into this expression, 2x plus 7. And we get 2 times 0 plus 7, which would be 7 as our final answer. Moving on, we have f of 2. Again, we want to make sure we're using the right portion. 2 is not greater than itself, so I would not be using this last one. But 2 is less than or equal to itself, so I'm going to be using the second expression. I'm going to go ahead and plug in 2. And we get 2 times 2 plus 7, 
which would end up being 11. And for our last example, we have f of four. Again, looking at my index, four is greater than two. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that third function. We get the square root of four, which would simplify to be just two. All right, your turn. Go ahead and test yourself and see if you can evaluate the function for the given values using the correct portion of your function. Just to go over them, we have f of x is equal to the absolute value of x for every x value that is less than zero. f of x is equal to three x for every x value that is between zero and four. And then f of x is equal to negative four for every x value that is greater than four. So again, go ahead and attempt a through e for this example, and then come back and check your answer. Hit pause now. Okay, let's see how you did. For our first example, we have f of two. So I'm gonna go ahead and evaluate my, or look at my index to evaluate which function I should use. Uh, two is not less than zero, but two is between zero and four. So I'm gonna use the second piece, the three times x. And you can see we did that and we got six as our answer. For our second one, we have f of seven. Seven is greater than four. And for any x value greater than four, our function is just negative four. There's no work to be done. So negative four is my answer. For C, zero is gonna be between zero and four. So I use my second piece. And when I plug it in, we get three times zero, which is gonna be just zero. And we're gonna do the same thing for D because again, four is less than or equal to itself. But four is not gonna be greater than itself. So we have to use a second piece. And if we do, we get 12. And then for our last example, we have negative five. And negative five is less than zero. So plugging that into my absolute value function, we get a positive five as our final answer. For this example, instead of having the equation of our piecewise function, we have the graph. And we can see that there are two pieces. From x equaling negative four all the way to x equaling one, we have this top piece. And then from x equaling one down to x equaling three, we have our second piece for our piecewise function. So when we're evaluating our function, we're gonna go ahead and use our graph to do that. For a, f of negative four, I'm gonna go on my x axis to where x equals negative four, and then go down to my graph. I can see I have a closed circle at negative three, which means my y value is negative three. And that's going to be my answer. Doing the same process, I'm going to go to negative 1 on my x-axis. I can see that my line crosses through there at 0, which means my y value is 0. So I'll put 0 down. At 0, we can see that our line crosses at 1. So my answer is going to be 1. And we're going to kind of just continue this process. We're going to go on the x-axis to the given value. Then we're going to go ahead and scroll up or down to our graph and identify what the corresponding y value is. At 1, we have a bit of a, an issue here. So we have a solid circle at two, but then we have an open circle at negative one. If we ever have a graph overlapping, we wanna pick the solid portion here. So in this case, we're gonna go at one up to two and put an answer of two because that's a corresponding y value. Again, we would not include this negative one down here because that's an open circle and our graph doesn't actually equal negative one. It starts there. All right, at three, we're gonna go ahead and go over to three, scroll down, we can see that our graph is at negative three. And then at four, our graph does not exist. Our graph is only going from negative four all the way to three, which means that at x looking four, we do not have an answer, so it does not exist. Here we have the exact same values, but we have our equations instead, and we're gonna go ahead and verify that what we did was actually correct. So we have for our first piece, x plus one, when x is gonna be from negative four to positive one. And then for the second piece, f of x is gonna equal negative x if we have values from one to three. And again, we're gonna go ahead and plug in the same value we did for our last example. And algebraically, we should get the same thing we got from our graph. So looking at our first example, we have f of negative four. Negative four is greater than or equal to itself. So I'm gonna unplug it into this first expression and we get negative four plus one, which is negative three. And that's the same value that we got when we plugged it into our graph or when we verified it from our graph. For our next example, we have f of negative one. Looking at my, my uh, index, negative one is gonna be between negative four and one. So I'm gonna use this first piece. When I plug it in there, we get negative one plus one, which is zero. Again, that's what we got when we use our graph. For f of zero, uh, zero is again gonna be between negative four and one. So I'll use my first piece for my piecewise function. When I plug it in, we get zero plus one, which is one. And then at f of one, again, this is where we have our decision to make. Your first index says we go from negative four to one, and this one is less than or equal to one. The second piece is x is greater than one. And since one can't be greater than itself, we're gonna have to use this first piece because one is less than or equal than itself. 
we're going to go ahead and plug it in here, and we get 1 plus 1, which is 2. And then for our next example, we have f of 3. Looking at my index again, 3 is not going to be between negative 4 and 1, but 3 is less than or equal to 3. So I'm going to use my second piece finally. Plugging it in, we have negative 3. And that's our answer because there's no other work to do. And last but not least, we have f of 4. Going back to my index, I can see that 4 is not between negative 4 and 1. And 4 is also not going to be between 1 and 3. So I can't use either of my pieces here to plug that in. So again, this is going to be does not exist because your function is not defined for that domain value. All right, one more graph here. Your turn. I want you to go ahead and challenge yourself. See if you can come up with your answers here by identifying the correct value on the graph. And then check back in to see how you did. So go ahead and hit pause now. Try and answer A through F. And then check back in and see how you did. All right, let's see how you did. We're going to go ahead and check our answers here. So for the first one, f of negative 8, I'm going to scroll over to negative 8 on my x-axis and then go down. And I have a decision here. I have a solid circle or I have an open circle. Again, anytime you have this situation, you're always going to pick the solid circle. So we can see that this circle has a y value of negative 3, which is what my answer is. Just to reiterate, this open circle is a gap. The function is not defined for this portion here. Instead, we'd have to fill it in with our solid circle. Moving on at f of 2, we're going to scroll over to 2 and go up and see that we have a y value of 3. At f of 6, again, we have a decision to make. We have a closed circle and an open circle. For this open circle, again, it tells me the function is not defined at 6 for this piece, but it is defined at 6 for that top piece. So I'm going to go ahead and use this value, which again is going to be 5. You can see that's my answer there. For f of 9, if I scroll over to 9 and up, we can see I have a y value of 3. And for f of 10, if I scroll over, we see that we're on the x-axis, so we have a y value of 0. All right, that does it for our notes for this section. Go ahead and get started on the homework, and good luck.